New Hope TV, your encounter with God. I'm going to start my talk on happiness and joy, which I started last time, by reading a verse in the book of Deuteronomy. And in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, in verse 47, we read this. Because you did not serve the Lord, your God, with joy and gladness for the abundance whom the Lord, because of all, the abundance of all things. Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in the lack of all things. And he will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. It's a very frightening verse. And the only crime is you did not serve the Lord with joy and gladness. Can you imagine this? I'll read the verse again, okay? This is Deuteronomy 28th chapter, and I'm reading verse 47. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness for the abundance of all things, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and the lack of all things and he'll put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. So if you're not joyful, if you're not happy, the consequences is very, very tragically unbearable. So you're not joyful and, and you're not glad for all the blessing that God has given you. Therefore, the Lord says, You'll have hunger, you'll have thirst, you'll have, you'll, you'll have no clothes to wear, and you will lack all things. And he'll put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. It's fascinating for me because the, the converse of that is this, that when you serve the Lord joyfully, when you serve the Lord with happiness and gladness, you will have all these things. As we read in Proverbs, the 17th chapter, we read that merry heart is like a medicine. So you will receive all the benefits of that. Now, as I was saying in the last episode, I was saying that the, in the modern uh, science is doing a lot of research on happiness. And they found out that happy people not only live longer, they also make more money. Happy people, you know, it's very interesting that there are many universities in America who teach on happiness. In fact, in the last six months, if they were to take an account, there are thousand books that are published on happiness. The United Nations have declared March 20th as the International Day of Happiness. Because they recognize the importance of that. Government is appointing cabinet positions to bring happiness in the country. So, as I told you, uh, universities like Harvard is actually teaching courses on happiness. Now, let me try to define what happiness is and I also try to give you an, a biblical understanding of this. Now, there are various definitions of happiness, and um, I think I even if you go to the journals, uh, there is about at least 14 varieties of definition of happiness. But let me try to summarize some of these things that makes meaning to all of us, so that we understand what happiness is. Happiness is, in one sense, a sense of feeling satisfaction. Happiness is a sense of feeling content. And as even as believers, you know, you know, at, at one time Paul says these beautiful words. He says, I have learned the secret of being content. Now, you all, we all can improve. God wants us to improve. None of us need to be like what we are. 
We can always become more than what we are right now because God has created us to become awesome, amazing. But there's also a necessary learning that we have to do. Learn to be happy and content just as we are. And I, I always say this, that I have everything that I need right now. What I don't have, God gives me grace to live without it. I have everything. That secret, as Paul says it, is one of the definitions of happiness. You know, so there are some people who are always saying, if I get this, I'll be happy. If I get this job, I'll be happy. If I go to America, I'll be happy. Even if I don't go to heaven, that's okay. But if, I need to go to, if I go to America, I'll be happy. If I have this four-bedroom house, I'll be happy. And I think some people are always grumbling and murmuring. They'll be grumbling and murmuring with everything. So I think some of these people, even if they go to heaven, they look at some part of the gold and say, this part of the gold eh, is not shining too much. Because you have learned to find fault all the time. They can never be happy. Happiness also means you have purpose and meaning in life. People who are happy have find meaning and purpose in living. I'll tell you one secret of happiness. Learn to bring joy and happiness to others. We read about Jesus Christ. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. People who are happy and joyful are people who have a purpose and meaning to bless others, to give something to others. You know, the word blessed is a very common word. You know, and in, in the Beatitudes, the Lord Jesus Christ used the word blessed. I like the way the word blessed comes in the Amplified Bible. In the Amplified Bible, and always remember this, to be happy and joyful springs from our relationship with God. Our relationship with God. Now, I'm going to give you the Amplified Bible just how the word blessed comes. You remember the Beatitudes? Here it is. Blessed. Happy to be envied. So you become so happy that people envy you. That's being blessed. And spiritually prosperous. Jesus loves me. I am, I am blessed with all the spiritual blessing. God has removed the curse from my life and he has blessed me with the blessing of Abraham. I am blessed because of what Jesus did on the cross for me. You know that I like the verse in Galatians where we know we have this tremendous exchange offer. Our guilt, our shame, our sin and Christ's righteousness and the blessing of Abraham. And I always like to think of myself, because of what Jesus did on the cross, I have all the blessing of Abraham on my life. That's why Christ died. He died to remove all the curse and give me the blessing of Abraham. Truly, every believer is blessed because of Jesus Christ. So the word blessed is to be happy, to be envied by others, spiritually prosperous. You know, when you look at a fat person who is very fat or has a big belly, we say, oh, you look very prosperous. Maybe in one sense. But every believer is spiritually prosperous because of the blessing of what our Jesus Christ our Lord has given to us. That with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor. Your joy, your satisfaction is in God's favor. That is exciting. 
regardless of the outward condition. Now that's happiness and that's true joy in the Lord. So this is the joy that we are talking about. This is the happiness that Christ gives in our lives. And now what science is saying is very interesting. It says, when your heart is filled with gratitude, that's happiness. Now, I'm filled with gratitude and happiness because of Jesus and his love and all the blessing that is lavished upon me, not just counting the earthly benefits, the spiritual ones, which is permanent. Another definition of happiness is enjoying intimate relationship. If you want to be joyful, you must have intimate relationship. Now, you and I as believers, we enjoy an intimate relationship because of his deep love. You know, for me, salvation, what is salvation? Salvation is an invitation from God through repentance and faith to come and enjoy intimacy with God the Father. Salvation is not, oh, you get saved, you must go to church, you must read the Bible, you, you must get involved in church activities, you must do the ministry. I think all of them are very important. But they spring from the enjoyment of God's love in your life. So the prodigal son came back, he repents, and as soon as he sees, the father sees the son coming, the father runs, the father hugs him and kisses him, probably is thinking of the pigs, he never brushed his teeth, never had a bath for many days, but the father simply hugs him and kisses him, and he says, let's have a party, you know? Here's my definition of salvation. Salvation, yes, you have to repent. Yes, you have to accept him as Lord and Savior. But that is the beginning, or that's the door in which you enter. And then salvation is through repentance and faith. To, be, to come, to be hugged and kissed and held lovingly by an awesome father. And in that loving hug and enjoying his deep love, hearing the music, hearing the dancing, hearing the celebration, living in that loving relationship with the Father is salvation. Now, people who study happiness tell us, if you want to be happy, have a relationship. And for me, it's, it's like, wow, I'm already having a amazing relationship with God. And therefore, I'm happy. Now, that's the primary source of happiness. Then the significant relationship that God has given in our lives, our families, our husbands, our wives, our children, having friends, having good people around you. You know, one important thing for happiness Surround yourself with happy, positive people. You know, um, one of the things that I, you know, it's very important to find a church that is helpful, where you can go and you know people accept you, they will correct you, they will, they will be, you, you can be accountable to them and yet will accept you just as you are. They will love you, they'll correct you, they will accept you and teach you in the midst of the fact that you're going through struggles, they stay with you and they'll be your best friend. You have to find a church like that. You have to find church people in your life who you could joke and laugh with. You, you have to go to a church where you will feel that there are few people who you could call at any time for any help to be with you. You know what they found out? They found out that people who go to church regularly, they live five years longer, actually. You, know, you need to thank your pastor for that one, right? 
people who go to church on Sunday morning, and I say just not go to church and you know appear and disappear. But you have a few friends you talk to, you joke with, you laugh. They inquire about you and how's your health and everything. Very important. And people who go to church once a week, and people who go for a Bible study or a, you know cottage prayer meeting or life group, whatever you go to a small group, you have a Bible study, you have prayer time together. They live two years longer. So you had already seven years to your life, just by good relationship. You know, it is very funny that I was sharing this in a church and the pastor was sitting behind. He shouted, yes, you, if you go to church, you live five years longer. If you go to a Bible study, another two years. And if you give tithe, another two years longer. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I'll tell you one thing about giving though. People who are generous in their words, help others, freely share their resources with others, they are much happier. People who are only thinking about themselves, who only concentrate about their lives, who are not concerned about other people, they can never be happy. You know, we used to say, the best way to be happy is to make somebody else happy. It's a very interesting study that they made. They asked couples, husband and wives, to walk from one building to another building. That's all. That was their assignment. But unknown to these subjects, there was a beggar who they sent on the way. So when they're going from this building to the other building, there's a beggar who would come and ask for some help, you know. And they never knew that this was part of the study. This couple never knew. Anyway. When they came from this building to the other building, they asked their wives and said, now look at your husband after he has come to this building. Look at your husband. Tell us how he looks like. What happened? Very interesting thing. Some of the wives said, well, actually my husband looks more attractive. He looks more wonderful now. And the other wife said, he looks the same. There's no change. And you know what? Every husband who opened his purse and gave a few rupees out to this beggar, he looked more attractive, more beautiful, just being little generous. If you want to be happy, you must make somebody else happy. Because the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. You know, in the book of uh, Philippians, Paul says a very interesting thing. He says, you know, each one must not look out just for his own needs, but look out for the needs of others. In Philippians chapter 2, and uh, it says, verse 3, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another more important than himself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. And one of the, one of the great sources of joy and happiness is to be able to look for the interest and the needs of others and to meet it. Love is the accurate estimate of the other person's need and to meet it. How wonderful it will be in the husband-wife relationship, brother-sister relationship, constantly I'm looking out for the needs of others. Ha Love is the accurate estimate of the other person's need and to meet it. So another definition of happiness is is a neurophysiological state of peace and well-being that does not depend on external circumstances. A state of peace and well-being. And I think for us as believers, peace is in the fact of knowing that God is in control of everything. Peace is, in fact, the assurance that comes to us in knowing that he deeply 
loves us. Now, one of the things that I learned about faith, faith is to relax and rest in God's unconditional love, His grace and His promises. May I say that again? Faith is to relax and rest in God's unconditional love, His promises, His character, and nature. It's not about us. So, happiness is this state of being satisfied, this state of finding meaning and purpose in life where you want to bless others. Happiness is enjoyment of intimate relationship. You know that quotation, no man is an island? Actually, a believer said that. And therefore, to have relationship, meaningful relationship, is so vital. Never cut yourself from people. One sure way of being depressed, just be a loner. <laughs> you get depressed. That is why we need community. You know, in Genesis, when we read, it's not good for a man to be alone. We think of marriage. I definitely think marriage is a part of that. It also means it is just not good for anyone to isolate himself from people. And as I said, our ultimate primary source of relationship is God. The significant people that God has in your life. Your family. The body of believers and good friends. And when you enjoy that, you too have. So happiness, now let me give you another important thing. We all can increase our level of happiness. They use a term called set point of happiness. Set point of happiness is, we have set for ourselves and said, well, I can be only happy this, this much level. I can't be too excited. I can't be too happy. I can't be bubbly bubbly. I, this is my personality. You know, I like the word personality. It comes from the Latin word. And the meaning of the word for personality, or the root word of personality is mask. Like you, 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 you act a drama, you put a, a costume that is different, your hairstyle is different, your face looks different. That's the word personality. In other words, we put a show. Now listen to this. You can change. Scientists are now telling us there are new things called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the fact neurons, our brain are made of neurons. They are plastic. You can mold and be transformed. There is genetics and DNA which we study. There is epigenetics. There is behavior epigenetics. Basically what they tell you is this, that all of your gene expression can be transformed by what you feel, you think, you act, and you choose to be joyful. You can choose to change. You are not a victim of your biology. So nobody should say, no, my personality is like this. I am a sad person. You see my grandfather's photo, he'll be sad. I also am like that. No. You can change everything. So C.S. Lewis said it so beautifully. Joy is a choice I make every day, every millisecond. Two Christian psychologists wrote a book, and the title of that book was Happiness is a Choice. I choose to rejoice in God every day. I choose to be happy in His love every millisecond. You know, uh, Reader's Digest had a beautiful quotation. It said, the only failure is to fail to be happy this millisecond. And may I say this, the only failure is to fail to experience 
and be joyful in his love this may lead second and may god bless you